Modifying kernel parameters isn't something you need to do every single day, but when you need to do it, it's going to be done with an application called SysCTL, not SystemCTL. That's the one for modifying SystemD module. SysCTL is a standard Unix application on macOS, BSD, Linux, and all of the things in between. And whenever there is an ancient standard application that exists, like say Top, for example, something is always going to come along to try to modernize it in certain ways. And today we're looking at something that does exactly that for SysCTL. Today we are looking at Systeroid or Systeroid, depending on whatever you want to call it. Now this exists in two separate modes. Right now you're seeing the CLI mode, but there is also a TUI mode as well. And I'll cover this a bit later on in the video. Now because we are working with kernel parameters, anything you want to modify has to be done with root access. But if all you want to do is view the values and sort things and things like that, that can be done from your regular user account. But before we can modify anything, we need to know what we want to modify. So as we saw, running Systroid a is going to dump all of the variables and all of their values directly onto the terminal. And unlike the base version of SysCTL, all of these sections are going to be given a distinctive color. So VM is red, user is cyan, net is blue, so on and so forth. So we have ABI, FS, kernel, net, sun RPC, user, VM, dev, and debug. And all of the variables are going to be in alphabetical order, making it fairly easy to find where anything is located. But you might notice that not every single variable is the section dot the variable name. Things like, say, the ones in net filter. We have net.netfilter.nflog.a dot a number. So to make that a bit easier to read, or maybe a bit more of a logical structure, you want to view it as a tree. So that can be done by passing in the dash capital T option. Now make sure you keep the dash A option in there because that is going to indicate what variables we actually want to see. I'll show you how to modify that in just a bit. But as we can see now, rather than having vm dot vm dot vm dot all of these things are in the VM section, so we know implicitly that is going to be the full variable. Considering this is a modern application, it wouldn't be one if it didn't have a dash capital J option for outputting everything in JSON. Now, obviously, dealing with this on the terminal isn't going to be a lot of fun, but if you're already using JavaScript or Python to parse out JSON anyway, this is certainly nice to have. But to modify which variables you want to see, this can be done by passing in the dash R option. In this case, we don't need the dash lowercase a, but if you include that, nothing is going to change. So dash R is going to accept a pattern that appears inside of the variable. So let's say I want to see all of the VM variables. I can pass in VM dot, and now it just shows those. Or I want to see something like all of the uh, net dot net filter, for example, it's going to just show those. But let's say I found a variable that seems kind of interesting or might do what we need it to do. But we're not sure about exactly what it does or what range of values it can accept. Something like, say, vm dot swappiness. What we can do to fix that is go systeroid dash capital E, pass in the name of the variable, and this is going to bring up documentation for that variable. Now, I'm not sure about the name on other distros, but on Arch Linux, all of this documentation is coming from a package called Linux-Docs. This is basically the official kernel documentation, so we know what the kernel can do, which does mean that depending on what the variable is, let's say it's for a third-party kernel, it might not be in that documentation. And let's just say I want to modify this variable. Let's say I want it to be set to 50 instead. Now, it's modified in the same way that sysctl does it, which means it's modified in a really, really dumb way. So we go and pass in the dash w option. What you might think is we include the variable name and then the value you want to set it to. It's kind of like that. What we do is vm.swappiness or whatever variable we're trying to set, make sure you spell it correctly, equals, and then whatever value you want to set it to. So basically just rewriting out the entire variable declaration. It's really weird, I don't like it, but it is like that for a reason in Systeroid. It says the variable has been set, let's go and check it. If we go and do a Systeroid-r vm.swap, as we can see, 
value is set to 50. One of the nice things about Systeroid is it doesn't try to do everything from scratch. In many ways, it tries to be compatible with SysCTL, and one of those is by interfacing the SysCTL files. So if we go and run Systeroid dash dash load, this isn't actually going to work, but it tries to load values from slash Etsy slash SysCTL.com. It only doesn't work on my system because that file doesn't exist right now. But it's going to use the exact same file format as SysCTL, and you can use that command to pass in a custom path. But if you want to go and load in every single SysCTL file, that can be done by passing in the dash capital S option, and that is going to go and cycle through all of those directories. So slash Etsy slash sysctl.d slash run slash sysctl.d slash user slash local slash lib slash sysctl.d, just to name a few of them. And that's not all. The main options available inside of Systeroid are going to be the exact same options available over on SysCTL as well. And the reason for this is to make it so this application is backwards compatible with SysCTL. So if you want to go and take this and then just drop it onto a system using SysCTL, it's very, very easy to do. Systeroid even includes some of the options which don't need to exist. Things like dash capital A and dash capital X, which just exist as aliases of dash lowercase a, which only exists for BSD and legacy compatibility. Speaking of BSD though, it is missing two of those options, dash lowercase o and dash lowercase x, which on Linux say does nothing. But on BSD, I'm guessing has some sort of functionality which doesn't make any sense for the Linux kernel. But considering the fact that the documentation for this comes from a package called Linux-docs, it doesn't really make any sense to include that BSD stuff anyway because it doesn't support Support that system. But there is an option to pass in custom docs, so I guess if maybe you want to use it on a BSD system and then get the documentation in the same format as Linux docs, you probably could just make it work like that instead. Now I want to talk about the TUI mode. So right now there are two ways to open it. What you can do is Systeroid dash dash TUI, or you can do Systeroid dash TUI as one word. And there is a slight difference. Basically, you should never use this version. So, the problem with Systeroid dash dash TUI is Systeroid dash TUI has some extra options to modify how the TUI works. But using the first option, you can't pass any of those options through. I expect that to change in the future, but for now, I'm just going to use the second option. So, this works as a pretty basic TUI. We can scroll up and down by using the up and down arrow keys, or using J and K instead, whichever one we prefer. And you can probably already see that a lot of the variables don't have documentation. So when something does have documentation, it is instantly going to flash up on the screen like this. And because there are 927 variables in my system, we need some way to filter it. This can be done by pressing the slash key and then typing in whatever I want to see. Let's say something like vm dot swappiness and it brings up that one. Let's try a different one. Let's say something like our host name, for example. So if we go and press enter, it is going to close the search and then leave us with whatever the results are. Then to get rid of the search, just press the slash and enter key again. Now we can also go and press the tab key to jump between each of the sections, but it's not just going to jump between those sections, it's actually going to filter out everything that is not in that section. So right now on ABI we have one thing, then FS there is 39, so on and so forth, and some of the sections actually have no variables whatsoever. If you keep pressing the tab key at some point, it's going to take you back to the entire list. Now one really cool thing you can do is copy a variable name or its value. Let's say something like this one here. If I go and press the C key, it brings up this context menu with the parameter name and the parameter value. I'm going to say I want to copy the parameter name. If we go to another window, we can now paste out the value. But the most important thing is setting a value. If I go and press the enter key, that will bring up a little command menu down here with the value and the variable name in it. I can then go and set it to whatever I want it to be set to. If I then press enter again, it will try to modify it, but because I'm not using root right now, I cannot do that. And if at any point you forget the hotkeys, just press the question mark key, it'll bring up this interface, and if you press the down key, you can actually start scrolling through it as well. And you'll notice that some of the keys I didn't mention, because for a lot of things, there are going to be doubles as well. Things like the up and down, or things like the help, and things like that. 
if you happen to find the right-hand side documentation annoying, or maybe you know every single variable you want to use, and you don't really care to see it, pass in the dash n option, and that will launch the application with no documentation enabled. There are other little things you can do, like starting on a specific section, or starting with a query, or changing the background and foreground color, but none of that stuff is really that interesting. So just like how top does basically everything you need top to do, and you don't need htop, you also don't need systeroid, but if you find yourself playing around with kernel parameters fairly often, and you want a more modern way to do so, Systeroid is certainly here to try. And the most important thing is that it is written in Rust. And on Arch Linux, there is a package for it. On everything else, you can install it through Cargo. So let me know your thoughts down below. Is this something you would ever consider using? Or is the only time you modify kernel parameters on some server somewhere, and you don't want to have to go out of your way to add a new application? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like this video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and bear pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast, Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel, Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.